Hi guys and welcome to Theory Essentials. Today's topic is all about Assetto Corsa Competizione on the HP Reverb G2. Should you run it at 60Hz or should you run it at 90Hz? Let's go! Thank you to all our regular subscribers for coming and supporting us again and again and again to the channel. You guys are awesome and very nice to meet you if it's your first time here to the channel. Today's topic is very exciting. We're going to look at the differences between when you're using 60Hz or 90Hz with the Assetta Corsa Competizione using the HP Reverb G2 and the Windows Mixed Reality software, of course. Now, in the previous video, we looked at all the various different settings one by one on the NVIDIA GeForce using the RTX 2070 i7-9700K and the Asus Maximus Hero 11 motherboard. We also did not factor in reprojection or any other scripts of any kind. In fact, we focused on the 100% settings in the Steam VR in the previous video. So do be part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you subscribe so YouTube tells you when we upload a new video which will focus about reprojection and also the JSON script to boost those FPS and graphic fidelity textures. All right, without further ado, let's dive into VR. This is your captain speaking. Now, I'm going to show you some benchmarking as to the reasons why you may want to choose one or the other. Of course, the primary reason as to why you would want to use 60 Hz is because your graphics card simply, you know, would not be able to run faster than 60 Hz. That would be the primary reason. And then, of course, also for those who can do both 60 or 90 is because you may want to save some power, especially on your GPU. So. I will show you some benchmarking as I just mentioned. So in order to change this, all you have to do, of course, is go to your Mixed Reality from Windows settings and then go to Headset Display. And then here you can make the changes. You can decide whether you want 90 Hertz, whether you want 60 Hertz, or if you want to let Windows decide. And also, by the way, if you do get any issues with black screen or, you know, blue screen, especially black screen, do go to the link description below. I did a whole video as to how to fix this uh, potentially. But so for now, we're going to choose 60 Hertz and then later I'm going to show you for 90 Hertz. This is your captain speaking. So I got my HP Reverb G2 on and we're inside of Steam VR. So all good. Let's bring up the actual settings and then let's go to video and then also per application video settings and then choose a Seta Cota Competizione. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you're at 50% for the custom resolution multiplier. So in fact, it's going to be less than your actual VR headset, but there is a reason to this. And I'm going to show you how to boost the settings inside of Assetto Corsa so you understand how you can get the best graphics as well as the highest uh, frames per second at the same time. So don't worry about here. And then for the use global settings, I did a previous video on this. So do go and check the link description below also. And then for legacy reprojection, we're going to leave this off. Guys, there will be uploading a separate video about reprojection and also using a JSON script to boost those FPS. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe. So YouTube tells you when I upload that video. So once we're all good, all we have to do is close this and then go back to return home. And if, by the way, you were at 100 and you made the change to 50, make sure that you close Steam and Steam VR and restart it before you come back into Steam VR and then go to launch the game. All right, all right, let's start. This is your captain speaking. So we're back inside of Assetto Corta Competition. Let's go to the settings. I'm going to be using the PC version here because I can't record this inside of my VR headset. Go to video. Then we're going to start off with the VR low native. We're not going to change absolutely anything whatsoever. And then later I'm going to show you the best graphic settings that I personally use to get the most out of my machine using the 60 Hertz refresh rate option. And you know, we'll go through every single thing one by one. So let's just start off with that first. Now, as you can notice on the video, there are several different things to take note here as to why perhaps you would want to use 60 Hertz refresh rate if you are able to use 90 Hertz as well. The first thing to take note, of course, is that the average frame per second is 60. So that means we've actually reached the maximum capacity and everything is doing its job really nicely. And you know, you're going to have very smooth gameplay there. Now, the other thing is, of course, and this is why you would want to choose perhaps 60 Hertz instead of 90, is if you look at the GPU temp and usage, we are below the 50% and everything is green, which basically means that the temperature 
is not reaching its full capacity and our GPU doesn't run in the risk, especially if you're going to, let's say, play for, you know, three hours or whatever it might be, then, you know, you're not at risk here to causing any potential harm to your actual GPU. So this is something to take note of. Now, there is a slight debate in the community of Aceto Corsa Competizione, which, by the way, is very large, about motion sickness. Now, as you can see in the video, even though we did reach, you know, 60 frames per second, you can definitely tell that there are a lot of issues here in terms of the graphics, even though, of course, the game itself looks very smooth. But, you know, motion sickness doesn't generally only happen of, you know, how many frames per second you're going to get. It can also very much occur when the graphics, you know, don't have high fidelity. So let's work on that a little bit and see how we can improve things. Now, clearly the graphics now are much, much better. They're much sharper. And also there's a lot less jagged edges there. But there are a couple things to take note of. First of all, you can tell by the GPU temp and usage that it is above 50%. In fact, it's almost using 100%. So you do want to stay normally between the 70 and maximum 90, I would say, percent, especially, you know, if you're going to use your GPU for, let's say, a couple of hours. But, you know, you don't want to use your GPU for too long, you know, five hours, six hours, at these kind of temperatures. It's not advisable, even though it doesn't show any orange at the moment. It's more in terms of the greens. But, you know, you may want to take note of this. Now, even though we did bump all the settings high, we're still within the 60 frames per second. You know, we're at 57 here, but do you know note that I was actually using OBS when doing the recording and then also the FPS tool as well. So these take some frames per second too. So when I wasn't using these, I was actually reaching more or less the 60 frames per second. So really all good there. Everything is super smooth. The textures are really great. So as you can tell, using SteamVR at 50%, really help to boost things here. And as I mentioned, we're not using any reprojection or any scripts of any kind. Everything here is completely native. So you could more or less reproduce this at your own home using a graphics card that perhaps, you know, is not the RTX 2070. In fact, it would be great to get your comments below. Let me know what kind of, you know, frames per seconds and, you know, things you managed to get by leaving a comment below so it can help the other 6,600 people in our community on the VR Essentials channel. Right, so let's change the settings now from 60 Hertz, which it was on, to 90 Hertz. And then what will happen is your screen, you know, will go black or twitch or something for a second. And then everything will be good. By the way, I am using also the resolution display to the best quality. And also for the change, best visual. Also, you know, just FYI in case you wanted to know. Now that we've changed the settings to 90 Hertz, we're inside of SteamVR once more. Let's bring up the settings. And then we're going to go to video again and per application video settings and look for Aceto Corsa Competizione. There we go. Now, as I mentioned before, we're not going to be using reprojection. Do hit the notification bell as we'll be uploading a separate video for this. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to benchmark two different settings. One will be at 100% and then the other one will be at 50% and we're going to show you the differences in terms of graphics and also frames per second. You're going to be pretty surprised as to how much power and how much fidelity we can get using those various different settings. So once you've chose 100%, you use global settings, make sure reprojection is off for today's video and then you click on close. And then normally it will register. All you have to do is close SteamVR and then close also your Steam. Restart both programs, come back, and then we will launch from here. So see you in Aceto Corsa Competizione. This is your captain speaking. All right, so we're inside of the gameplay now, and basically I'm using the native high settings. I didn't make any changes whatsoever. The render scale is actually put at 80, and then the pixel density is put at 120. However, in the high, there's also other settings there that are put on high or medium, like the shadows and all that kind of stuff. So as you can tell, there is a little bit of latency when it comes to the corners, especially. I can't actually hear the sound because I got the VR headset on, but I turned the sound off and I'm not wearing the my headphones. So excuse me for my driving. Um, but basically, yeah, you can tell that there's definitely some issues here in terms of the graphics. It's quite blurry. It's very uncomfortable. And I'm feeling a little bit like I'm going to, you know, perhaps get some motion sickness. Um, however, in terms of the smoothness of the gameplay, it's not too bad. 
but when I go into the corners, I can definitely tell that the machine is trying to think in terms of pre-rendering those frames before they actually come out on the screen. But then 60% of the rest of the actual gameplay is rather smooth, uh, pretty fast, so pretty good. So it just basically means we might have to work in terms of downsizing the render scale and then perhaps bumping up a little bit the pixel density and then taking down some other things just to, you know, make it a little bit better. But at this moment in time, I would say that I would much rather play the settings I used yesterday or a few days ago in the video that I posted in the link description below where I actually had Steam VR at 100%, not 50%. And then I did, you know, a whole bunch of other things and tweaks to make sure it was running pretty smoothly. And do take note that there's no reprojection here or, you know, scripts running of any kind. I will be doing a separate video about this to show you how you can bump the video, sorry, not the video, the frames per second and the graphics to much, much higher uh, resolution and also smoothness in terms of the gameplay. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe so YouTube tells you in your feed, um, you know, when I will upload that video. All right, so I made some changes to the graphics and as you can tell, it looks very smooth, much more polished and, you know, things are working much better than when they're put on native high. I didn't put native Epic because there are too many issues with Epic. So I did have to do some customization and I will show you exactly the settings that I use when using SteamVR at 50%. Now there is some trade-off between SteamVR 50% and 100%, even though I'm using the highest graphics that I feel would suit, um, you know, the purpose of today's video, uh, including some of the sharpness. It, it, you will definitely lose some clarity there um, you know, when you're putting SteamVR at 50% for sure. So do go and check out, you know, the previous video to see what it does look like when you put SteamVR at 100%. However, when you put SteamVR at 50%, it will definitely help those who perhaps don't have a graphics card that is, you know, an RTX 2070 or above, and also perhaps those that are using, you know, different motherboard, you know, a chip and all these kind of things as well. So do do try it out first before you start bumping, you know, things up. That will be the first thing. The other thing that you can notice is also that the GPU's uh, actual temperature is higher when boosted from the high native to now. Uh, we're using about 80, 86 percent between 78 and, you know, 86 percent, I would say, in terms of heat. So do have to be cautious there. And then also I did notice that the actual FPS tool itself doesn't seem to give a proper reading in terms of the actual uh, FPS that are running FPS by FPS, but it does seem to give a proper reading in terms of the average FPS. So I would focus more on the average FPS than the actual, um, you know, FPS by FPS because I'm not actually running reprojection at the moment um, or any script. So I don't really know why it's telling me. Normally when you use reprojection, it will limit the FPS to about 45 and then use whatever other frame rate in between to reproject those frames to give you the impression that you're running at 90. But my actual settings are put to false and disabled. And when I go into my Steam VR, I actually put reprojection to off. So I'm not quite sure why it says 45 there for some reason. This is your captain speaking. There you go, it's much smoother, much better gameplay now. Uh, we're back inside the orange for the GPU. So safer zones for sure. And the gameplay just feels so much smoother. It's much better. Even though it says 45 on the actual tool itself, it, def it definitely feels more like it's 60, to be honest with you. So I'm not quite sure why it says 45. And also it says average frame, frame rate will say 40.3, but these tools generally take a few laps in order to catch up with the actual settings that are happening in game itself. So that is something that I have noticed when using this tool. And I will do a separate video about using the frames per second tool that you can buy from SteamVR. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe. So YouTube tells you in your video feed when I upload that video. But so far, this setting is much, much better, much nicer, very comparable to, you know, when using uh, SteamVR at 50% instead of 100%. In fact, I, I don't know whether I prefer this setting or the setting, you know, when lowering it down to 50%. It's, it's more or less the same. This is your captain speaking. Okay, so we're back of inside of Assetto Corsa Competizione. I just want to show you the 
settings that I used very quickly for when I was, you know, both at 50% to get the highest resolution and also when I was inside of 100 uh, very quickly. So basically, um, the first thing was I was able to actually bump this up to 70 for view distance. I was at high shadows. I kept those low uh, because they do take, you know, they take computation power and they don't make that huge amount of difference. Do go and check out the previous video, as I mentioned. I did some benchmarking there to show you. Um, also, contact shadows disabled, anti-aliasing epic, anti-aliasing type temporal. For effects post-processing, foliage and texture now, however, I was able to bump these up to mid and still get quite good, um, you know, uh, high fidelity textures, resolution, and also good frames per seconds, as you saw there. Uh, mirror quality, mirror view distance, you know, frame rate, all this is basically the same thing. No changes there. For the virtual reality VR pixel density, I was able to go to 170. So that is really, really awesome to be able to use 70 in the render scale and 170 inside of actual uh, VR pixel density. That was really, really good. In materials, I kept it to high. Temporal upsampling was enabled. Bloom off. Volumetric fog disabled. Foliage LOD quality was to mid. Car LOD quality 60%. And then the both other things were enabled. And then finally for here, uh, motion blur always off, saturation 100, even sometimes I put it to uh, 90, to be honest. I find that I get a better, but this is personal preference. White balance, neutral, sharpness 117. Anything between 100 and 150 is generally what I would use. Camera dirt, I always put to one because it doesn't make that much of a difference. And also it does cost in FPS. So I always put this to one for the moment anyway. Um, image contrast and all this kind of stuff is always as per normal. So guys, I hope that you are able to get something out of today's video. Do leave some thumbs up if you, you know, just to support the channel, if you felt that you had. There is definitely some give and take between 50% on Steam and 100% when you're using, you know, 90 Hertz refresh rate option inside of the Windows Mixed Reality settings. But we also proved today that you can use 60 Hertz refresh rate with not at all any problems and everything is really good and smooth. So in the next video, do be part of the notification squad and hit that notification bell after you subscribe so that YouTube will tell you when I upload the video using reprojection and also the JSON script, which is really awesome because we're really going to bump these setting ups even more. It's going to be really crazy. So guys, see you very soon.